principal lecturer at the University of Brighton and the fellow of the Institute of Biomedical Science. She joins me now from the UK. Uh, Sarah, good to have you on the show. All right, so I get the idea. I mean, the more a virus moves through a population or the longer they're around, the more the virus is, is, is going to evolve. That I get. Uh, but this was announced uh, that this new strain was identified in England back in September. That's more than three months ago. Why is this causing such a big fuss now? Um, because we've been monitoring the way the virus has spread around the country um, over over that time, or in fact over the whole of the year, and different um, different strains were in circulation. It just um, we but we've only just noticed relatively recently that a lot of cases were all linked and they were all um, related to this one strain. And um, one of the things we had a national lockdown in the UK back in um, sort of November through to the beginning of December. And one of the regions of the country, which was Kent, had very high cases going into that lockdown. And we weren't really be able, to, able to get on top of um, the, the number of cases, the number of people who were going to hospital, and the number of people dying was going up. And then I think the scientists kind of started to kind of look at the sequences and seeing that the cases were all, were all linked together. So that's what seems to have happened, I think. Okay. Um... One of your expertise is in clinical virology, uh, so help us understand what is concerning about this strain. In Liz Maddox's uh, news package, which we played about five minutes ago, there was a gentleman, uh, he was a microbiologist, and he had said that uh, he was talking about uh, the spike in proteins, but sort of uh, help us understand that. So this, um, the spike protein is the thing that you, that you see in the pictures that sticks, the sticky out bit on the actual virus particle. That's the thing that binds to your cells and it helps the virus to get inside your cells and start growing and dividing. And the changes that we've seen, there's one which has been known about for quite a long time, actually. Probably, I think it was first um, identified in Brazil back in March. It has also been seen in quite a lot of cases in, um, or sorry, a lot, quite a lot of virus isolates in South Africa as well. And the other, the, and there's another one, which was the one which was found in um, uh, the mink in Denmark. They, back in a couple of weeks ago, they had a big cull of minks in Denmark because they found that there was this change in the virus that made it very, um, very they said it was very infectious. The, the, and the, what's different with this one is there are 17 changes in the virus, which is a little bit unusual to have that many all in once. And these two big in you know changes which we're interested in have both come together in the one isolate and I think that's the first time that we've actually seen the two of them together and what they do is make the chances of the um, virus um, spike protein as you say attaching to the human cells is just more likely so that's why it looks as though it's more infectious. Okay um, I know that you've been monitoring this new strain for the better part of the last three months but but, I mean, if the fact that we're seeing more uh, vaccines becoming available is the best news for in all this, then the news of a mutation, I'm assuming, pardon my analogy, then it could be the worst news. I mean, do we have any idea how effective uh, these new vaccines, whether it's the new sort of ones from Pfizer or Moderna or the AstraZeneca one, will be with this mutated version? Well, we don't know whether, as I said, all these 17 changes and the two big ones that we're interested in all together in one virus will have a difference. But as I said to you earlier, both of the big mutations that we're worried about have been going around the world um, for quite some months. And the, the three sort of um, leading vaccines, um, but actually there's, there's more than three leading vaccines, but all the, the Pfizer BioNTech one, the Moderna one, and the Oxford um, vaccine. Those have been trialed across the world. So they've been trialed on lots of thousands of people in lots of countries where various mutations, not just this one, but all sorts of different mutations have been found and are transmitting between people. They've had a lot of cases in South Africa, for example, so that uh, one would suspect there might be a very transmittable and infectious strain going around in South Africa as well. 
um, the, the United States have had a lot of cases and all the vaccines have passed all their tests with flying colours. They're all showing really, really high efficacy levels of, you know, 60, 70, 90 percent. So um, the individual mutations, the individual changes don't appear to have had any effect on the virus so far. Whether putting them both together in one strain will have an effect, we don't know for sure. And um, we will have to wait and see with that one. But I, I think the other thing to bear in mind about the vaccines is that if even if it didn't work very well against this variant, it's working against most other variants. We can actually try and get the pandemic under control um, with the vaccine anyway. I don't think it stops us giving, getting a good chance of getting the pandemic under control, okay. even if this particular variant doesn't work. We can try other public health measures and other things to get this variant under control when we can um, use the vaccine against all the other ones. But I don't think there's any yeah. particular reason why the vaccine won't work against this one as things stand at the moment. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Sarah Pitt, thank you very much for joining us here on TRT World. I do appreciate your analysis.